Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite Steam Deck news anchor, Gardner. Today, we're going to talk about all of the crazy Steam Deck news that has happened over the last two-ish weeks. I'm very excited about this. The Steam Deck is awesome. In case you missed it, I actually got a Steam Deck from Valve. Thank you, Valve, for sending this to me. This thing is amazing. Um, if you missed my review of it, my first impressions of it, uh, check the video. There's going to be a link up here in the top right corner. Uh, but with that, all that said, let's get started. So let's talk about Proton Experimental updates, because these are really important for the Steam Deck. Uh, the same day reviews went live, Valve updated Proton Experimental. This update allowed Devil May Cry 5 HD Collection and Dragon Quest Builders 2 to run. Several bugs were fixed, including the Xbox login screen hang when launching Sea of Thieves, improved performance on Forza Horizon 5 with F-Sync enabled, and Ubisoft Connect updating. Wine Mono, a FOSS implementation of Microsoft's .NET framework, was upgraded and steering wheel detection has been improved. Elden Ring got better support for the Steam Deck and on desktop Linux. What was previously a game that had a lot of stuttering while loading is now a game that plays so much better. This fix was published to the Bleeding Edge branch of Proton Experimental, but then became part of the main branch a day later. Along with this update came a bug fix for Persona 4 Golden and an update for Wine Mono. There have also been many game-specific updates for the Steam Deck. Albion Online, uh, previously only playable with a mouse and keyboard, incorporated gamepad support on March 2nd, including support for the Steam Deck. This should greatly expand the game's user base now with players that aren't locked into uh, keyboard and mouse. The same is true for Factorio. The developers are also working on gamepad integration and UI fixes and improvements. The Long Dark, a survival game, has already had native support for a while, but suffered from flickering textures. The game recently got an update that switched from the OpenGL API to Vulkan, and users are reporting the visual bugs are now gone. Not only this, but The Long Dark is now part of an ever-expanding catalog of Steam Deck verified titles. Terraria also got an update that enhances the overall gameplay on the Steam Deck by updating the controller scheme. For example, the left trackpad now enables quick access menus such as commands like quick heal, quick buff, quick mana, and mount and dismount. The rear buttons have been utilized to zoom in or out of the mini-map and the world map. Slay the Spire was updated a few days after the launch of the Steam Deck with Steam input support, allowing a more enhanced experience on the handheld. And the tremendously popular survival game Valheim got a Steam Deck support update as well, with UI fixes and gamepad support fresh off the press. Some more examples are Oxygen Not Included, Tracks, Simple Planes, One Deck Dungeon, and many more. And though Respawn Entertainment hasn't made an official announcement, it seems Apex Legends recently received Steam Deck and Proton support. I personally have tested the game and I confirm that it runs just fine. Gaming on Linux and the Fox both have videos of the game being run on the Steam Deck. Since there hasn't been an announcement just yet, some of people are worried that they might rescind this as only a beta test, but I think that things are going to be good going forward. Next up, on March 4th, the Steam Deck celebrates over a thousand playable and verified games. Congrats to Valve for making it this far. This number will only increase by the time customers get their hands on the deck. And Valve has announced two additions to the uh, deck compatibility process. They have uh, created a dashboard to see all compatibility information for your catalog or developer's catalog of games. And the uh, Steam Events tool now allows devs to add more information regarding Steam Deck compatibility. And this is awesome to see. Valve is making it easier than ever for developers to add more Steam Deck verified games and give customers more info on, on how their particular games will run on the Steam Deck. Steam Deck updates are now public. Since the 1st of March, the patch notes for the Steam Deck client software are now available for everyone to read, not just developers and reviewers. Speaking of SteamOS updates, the Steam Deck got an update to fix Steam Cloud Sync issues and improved Steam input. Nice to see Valve aggressively tackling these issues now that more people are getting their hands on the Steam Deck. However, there are a bunch of people who are not so keen on the Steam Deck, that being Bungie. Now, on Bungie's Steam Guide for Destiny 2, they have a dedicated section for the Steam Deck. It mentions the following. Destiny 2 is not supported for play on the Steam Deck or any system utilizing Steam Play's Proton unless Windows is installed and running. Players who attempt to launch Destiny 2 on the Steam Deck through SteamOS or Proton will be unable to enter the game and will be returned to their game library after a short time. It further goes on to mention that, quote, players who are not accessing Destiny 2 through Windows and attempt to bypass the SteamOS Proton incompatibility will be met with a game ban. 
What they are saying is that they have deliberately built a SteamOS and Proton incompatibility into the game, and it is somehow defeatable, which is really strange considering that Destiny 2 was already ported to Linux for Google's Stadia platform. And for the record, Destiny 2 uses BattleEye. Enabling BattleEye support is only an email away for them. So I don't know why they are so anti-Linux. Did you hear that uh, Gaming on Linux is actually open for testing games for the Steam Deck? It's true. Liam Doff from Gaming on Linux wrote a post saying that he's open to testing any developer's game to make sure that it runs great on the Steam Deck. This is useful for game developers who want to have their game Steam Deck compatible, but who don't have a development kit themselves. And Liam mentioned that he's doing it for free, which is pretty cool to see. Speaking of free development, uh, the SteamOS dev kit is now open source. This is kind of a big deal for Steam Deck developers. Testing their games will be a lot easier now thanks to Valve releasing their dev kit tools to the public under a public license. Now, developers don't need Valve's approval for having access to a developer kit. Do you hear that, Nintendo? A free development kit. <laughs> but this is also a hallmark moment for the gaming industry, which has been notoriously closed source since time immemorial. Hopefully the team at Valve and the Steam Deck's popularity will push the gaming industry towards a more free and open source future. Speaking of the future, IGN interviewed Gabe Newell, who is the CEO of Valve, if you weren't aware somehow. Uh, and this was on the day that the Steam Deck actually went live. In short, Gabe, while mentioning that he's a fan of Final Fantasy XIV, uh, is also confident regarding the future of Valve's new handheld. He's assured us that despite whatever might be going on in the world, prices for the Steam Deck will remain the same as they are now. To his surprise, the highest tier model of the Steam Deck was the one that was pre-ordered the most. And this fact, Gabe says, will make Valve explore higher storage options for future products. Overall, demand for the device has been a lot higher than expected. Gabe has also been seen hand delivering Steam Decks to customers in the Seattle area, which is pretty amazing to see. <laughs> Let's talk about dbrand and uh, accessories for the Steam Deck. So in addition to announcing Project Kill Switch, a sturdy case for the Steam Deck, dbrand also recently announced a tempered glass screen protector pack. Also included are a few alcohol wipes, dust removal stickers, a squeegee, and a microfiber cloth. Looks like you're going to have no problem finding accessories for the Steam Deck once you get yours. Simon McVitie from Collabora wrote a short blog post on the process of developing SteamOS in collaboration with Valve. The post mentions that they've been working with Valve on the OS for, quote, several years, mentioning that uh, SteamOS is using Arch as a base, which we already knew, and they have been a major contributor when it comes to providing seamless system updates. The post also mentions the changes the KDE community has made to its desktop environment specific to, for the Steam Deck, including theme changes, UI elements, and stability fixes. In an IGN interview with Valve's designer, uh, Lawrence Yang, he was asked when people can expect their Steam Decks in hand. Yang said, by April, we'll be in the hundreds of thousands, and beyond that, it'll grow even quicker. Good news for those of us who are still waiting in the queue. And just before I was about to publish this video, uh, Valve have actually uh, updated the queue status uh, or the projections of when people in the Steam Deck queue are going to receive their Steam Decks or be able to replace the order for their Steam Decks. This is very interesting. So anyone who was listed as after Q2 2022, if you go to the product page on Steam for the Steam Deck, you should be able to scroll down and see uh, it should say Q3 2022 or after Q3 2022. Uh, I know that there has been uh, a little bit of an uproar on the Steam Deck subreddit of people being upset that they have been moved from after Q2 to after Q3. But after Q3 uh, is a subset of after Q2. So um, your position in line hasn't changed. Uh, this is just an update, uh, an updated projection on when you might actually receive your Steam Deck. Uh, so sit tight. If you're excited about the Steam Deck, you'll get one eventually. Uh, hopefully before or around Christmas. As I said in this video, Lawrence Yang believes that production will ramp up to the hundreds of thousands per month, and Valve has received insanely positive press and way more orders than they thought that they were going to receive. And for the record, while I have a review unit that was supplied by Valve, I did put down my $5 to reserve my spot in line, and I am part of the Q3 gang. I ordered on the day that the pre-orders went live, uh, and I am in Q3. So. Um, we will see what happens. <laughs> and finally, let's talk about Aperture Desk Job. 
this is kind of big news. Valve released a tech demo. Uh, this is a title in the Portal universe, and it's called Aperture Desk Job. This was released on March 1st, just a few days after the Steam Deck's official launch, and it's truly a hilarious game that uses toilets like a machine gun. Uh, it was specifically built with the Steam Deck in mind, as a lot of the controls are specific to the device, therefore giving the players a taste of the Steam Deck's capabilities. It's available for both Linux and Windows, and you don't have to own a Steam Deck in order to play it. Anyone with a laptop or desktop with moderately reasonable specs should be able to play the game nicely. And I have missed a ton of news here. Uh, there's been so much Steam Deck news since the deck actually launched. Uh, if I missed anything, let me know in the comments. You can also let me know in the comments what you think of this video. How was it? Was it good? Did you enjoy it? If it was good, you can hit that like button and let us know you want to see more content just like this. You can also hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the cool stuff that we're doing here on the channel. We're doing tons of Steam Deck coverage, and I have one on hand that I've been playing for over two weeks now. I would love to hear what you guys like to see on the Steam Deck. Let me know down in the comments. I want to give a special shout out to my patrons, without whom I wouldn't be able to do this. Uh, my YouTube members, my patrons, you guys really make this show possible, so thank you. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help support this show, you can join the 100 plus other Linux warriors with the links below. And thank you. But I think that's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day, and I'll see you in the next one.